Hello dear friends this is your personal English coach Divyam here and in this video we will be continuing from where we had left off in part 1 of the story to build a fire written by Jack London. To give you a summary or a recap of what happened in part 1 there is a man who the writer has chosen not to name is a protagonist protagonist means a leading character of the story so the leading character of the story a man sets out to trek in a place called Yukon which is a Canadian territory and all he knows is there is too much snow he is not realizing the dangers that heavy snow can cause to a human life or to any creature in the world it is sub-zero it is not just freezing temperature but it is minus 50 and beyond that's what the writer says it is now as we got to know in one of the paragraph it was minus 75 degrees so we had seen how when the man used to spit the spit would convert into ice before it fell the ground and he would hear the noise but did that impact the man did that affect the man and his decisions no all he thought was in severe cold temperatures you have frostbites and that could be easily remediated with gloves and uh, moccasins and other clothes now what he had decided is he will set off at 10 a.m reach the stream division at 12 30 and go back to the camp from where he started off and where the boys had settled he had imagined that the boys would be still there and uh, the boys were different from him and he had set out alone the reason is the boys had come from a different path and this person the protagonist wanted to check if when ice melts do the logs start floating he wanted to check this possibility and therefore he had decided that he will take another path and he will walk all alone so he had set off from the camp and according to his plan as i said he would reach the stream division at 12 30 come back at evening six where the supper or the dinner would be ready and he would be sitting by the fireplace now the place where he had decided to start his trek nobody had come to that path from the past month so the last sled now what is a sled sled is a kind of a vehicle which you use in snow on which you can sit and just drag it to move further so no sled had passed from the past 30 days on the track which this man was going to venture out so it was deserted it was lonely it was very freezing but this man did not change his decisions for him it was easy and uh, in the final paragraphs we had seen how he faced a couple of problems like once he was uh, on one of the track he felt as if there is water beneath the land and he was about to slip off or get into the land or get absorbed by the snow into the water and what are the drawbacks what are the disadvantages if you are wet in ice you get frozen immediately so his senses were working fine so like a horse like a frightened horse he stepped back immediately as soon as he sensed danger so one more important thing that we had seen in part one is there is a dog but is the dog owned by this man no it's a local dog so probably the company or the institute or the agents who told this man to set off from the camp has given him a local dog and the dog is furry gray in color and resembles the breed of wolf now you must have seen in movies and uh, other places how the dogs are who stay in ice they are full of fur that's the best part about nature 
these animals have their own instincts to survive and they can survive in any severe conditions have you ever imagined about the dogs and cats that you see on the streets in india how do they survive from where do they get their food and uh, how do they live for years and years well nature has given them everything they need all right moving on with the next stanza at 12 o'clock the day was at its brightest obviously the reason is the sun is just above our heads and so the day is the brightest yet the sun did not appear in the sky we had seen in part one that uh, from couple of days sun was not seen sun was not visible it may be because of uh, any unforeseen condition unforeseen situation or because of the snow obviously so despite of the fact that a person did not see the sunrise it was brightest at half past 12 on the minute which means at sharp 12 30 this man arrived at the divide of the creek now this is what he had planned i will walk four miles per hour and reach the stream division he was pleased at his rate of speed he said everything is going as planned i don't need to worry about the condition or the snow it's all right i'll face few problems here and there but it's okay i'll fight it off and reach my destination at six which is a camp if he continued he would certainly be with the boys by six o'clock that evening that's what we just discussed a couple of seconds back this is his agenda this is his plan he unbuttoned his jacket and shirt and pulled forth his lunch in part one we had seen how he had kept his lunch he had kept his lunch uh, in such a way that it would touch his skin so that it would remain warm and so that when he reaches uh, the stream division at 12 30 all he would do is just pull it out pull out the packages the lunch was in packages and start eating the action took no more than a quarter of a minute yet in that brief moment the numbness touched his bare fingers so from the moment he unbuttoned his jacket till the point where he pulled out his lunch his fingers went numb the reason well it was minus 75 degree and anything freezes in this temperature so his finger went numb which means he couldn't feel his fingers anymore in few seconds he did not put the mitten on but instead struck the fingers against his leg usually what you do when you have a severe cold you put on the gloves you put on the blankets and stuff but he chose to strike the finger so even if you hit your fingers uh, uh, to your body right the blood flow increases and they become warm so that's what this man did he hit his fingers against his legs sharply so that the blood flow would increase and if the blood has uh, frozen it would melt and will help him stay warm then he sat down on a snow covered log to eat log is a part of a tree that's been cut down and it is covered with snow because of uh, extreme snowfall which we saw in part one the pain that followed the striking of his fingers against his leg ceased so quickly that he was frightened and why would the pain cease which means why would the pain stop when you hit your fingers to something it pains but this pain went away immediately and why does this happen it can only happen in a case when the fingers are numb again so within few seconds of his hitting the fingers went numb again now he was scared as we saw in part one he's not a visionary he is unable to predict the dangers of so much ice and uh, he is just in his own mind living in his own mind so this is the point where he was a little bit frightened for the first time he had not had time to take a bite of his lunch he struck the fingers repeatedly and returned them to the mitten he had established himself to have lunch on the snow covered log but is he getting time to eat he is not because he is constantly busy in making his fingers warm so he couldn't even uh, open the packages and eat 
he would hit his fingers and put them back to the mitten. Then he bared the other hand for purpose of eating. So he pulled the other hand out of the gloves and tried to eat. He tried to take a mouthful, but the ice around his mouth prevented him. As we know, this is a bearded man. He has a beard, a lot of beard. And on that beard, what happened in part one is because of his breathing, uh, the beard had a lot of frost on it and that had converted into ice so he could not open his mouth he could not open his mouth even to spit the tobacco which he had consumed then he knew what was wrong he had forgotten to build a fire and warm himself so at 10 a.m. he had planned that when I reached the stream division at 12 30 he would first lit fire and then eat lunch but he had forgotten that he laughed at his own foolishness he said ha i forgot to build the fire and i'm trying to eat my lunch so silly silly me as he laughed he noted the numbness in his bare fingers also he noted that the feeling which had first come to his toes when he sat down was already passing away which means can you guess what this line means he noted that the feeling which had first come to his toes which means he could feel his toes he could feel his toes when he sat down but they went numb he wondered whether the toes were warm or whether they were numb he moved them inside the moccasins and decided that they were numb so first of all he observed that his fingers were numb when he stopped and then he observed that his toes were numb so let me tell you about my own story if you've been to Kedarnath right if you reach the top and if you settle down for a while the temperature is not as severe as it is in the uh, it's in the story it's uh, minus 75 but at Kedarnath you have two degrees one degrees but even in that temperature while you're climbing and if you sit down right to take rest you feel colder your hands they go numb so similarly it happened with this man when he was trekking it was all good but as soon as he sat on this log to have his lunch everything started going numb first his fingers then his toes he pulled up the mitten on hurriedly and stood up he was somewhat frightened all right and why is he frightened because he never imagined that he would start freezing in few seconds he stamped forcefully until the feeling returned to his feet which means the numbness started going away the blood started circulating so he started stamping which means hitting the feet to the floor to the ice repeatedly or to his own body repeatedly in order for blood to flow in order for the ice to melt it was certainly cold was his thought now this is a sarcasm because he should have stopped his trek when he realized that it is too much cold but in his mind what he is thinking is it's too much cold doesn't matter it's just too much cold that man from sulfur creek had spoken the truth when telling how cold it sometimes got in this country so here we get to know that there is a so just to give you a little bit of uh, vision here is sulfur creek so it looks like this man had traveled all the way from sulfur creek to yokun i'm sorry it's yukon i always pronounce it wrong it's yukon and here is sulfur creek so there was an old man who warned this uh, unnamed person he said do not go there it's really risky but he didn't realize at that time and now he is realizing it when his feet and hands were numb so it says and he had laughed at him that time that showed one must not be too sure for things so still this person is uh, overconfident and when his fingers and feet are numb he is thinking one must not be too sure sometimes what people advise is right there were no mistake about it it was cold now that's what he's thinking that it is just cold I'll get some frostbites and a little bit of numbness and that's it 
He walked a few steps, stamping his feet and waving his arms until reassured by the returning warmth. So again, what do you do to bring back the body temperature to its normal? You move it rigorously like when you do a cardio workout your body sweats because the blood flows fast so similarly this man was also trying to stamp his feet and wave his arms and here and there until he could feel them back but was all of this useful not at all it was severe cold then he took some matches and proceeded to make fire now this was his plan so he is moving towards his plan make a fire have lunch in front of it or near it in the bushes high water had left a supply of sticks so because of the flow of water and it is high water which means the stream was having a good amount of force it was elevated and it had brought some sticks along with it on its way and therefore there were sticks on the bushes and from there he got wood to lit up fire to have some warmth working carefully from a small beginning he soon had a roaring fire so he made efforts to make sure that he has a nice fireplace where he could warm his body parts and eat food in peace bending over the fire he first melted the ice from his face so first thing was his face because his nose was frozen his uh, forehead was frozen and first thing is remove all the ice from around the mouth so that he could eat the food he could chew it he could put the food inside his mouth with the protection of the fire's warmth he ate lunch so that's a relief for the readers at least he ate his lunch in front of the fire from the moment the cold had been forced away the dog took comfort in fire now this dog it was aware that there's something called fire and if I sit beside this thing called fire I will be warm the dog did not really want to go with this man but because this man was commanding it because the owner of the dog the actual owner must have asked the dog to be with the man it was just giving a company lying at full length close enough for warmth and far away to escape being burned so very near to the fire but not so near that the dog would get burned it was acting according to its natural instincts when the man had finished eating he filled his pipe with tobacco and comfortable time with the smoke and had a comfortable time with the smoke so usually after lunch people uh, they smoke and they chew their tobacco so the man followed the same thing after having a good lunch from his packages which were inside his uh, uh, you know clothes now it was time to have tobacco and smoke and all of those things then he pulled on his mittens settled his cap firmly about his ears and started along the creek trail towards the left so he was successful in having his lunch lifting up a fire warming himself having a nice tobacco and a smoke and then sticking to the agenda sticking to the plan the dog was sorry to leave and looked towards the fire now the dog is aware that this man is making a mistake so not only was the dog sorry but also regretting the fact that it has come along with this man who is not a good visionary this man doesn't realize that the conditions are not good for a person to trek the dog is aware about all this this man did not know coal that's what the dog is also thinking possibly none of his ancestors had known coal real coal so in his family the ancestors the grandfathers or grandmothers never educated this man that if it's freezing if it's minus 50 and beyond it's minus 75 do not step up therefore this man could not believe when the old man from the uh, sulfur creek warned him he said it's just cold I will manage but the dog knew and all of its family knew because the dog was a resident of this uh, colder place it was very well aware that if it's minus 75 one should not get out and it knew that it was not good to walk outside in such a fearful cold that's what we discussed it was a time to lie in a hole in the snow and to wait for this awful cold to stop and that is what dogs do they dig up a hole inside the land 
and uh, sit in a position which ensures warmth to their own bodies and when the cold stop yes they get out that's what exactly this man should have done he should have rolled back his plan he should have retired from his trek but no this man would not the one was a slave of the other this dog was a slave of the other because he was instructed to do so and so the dog was exactly following the orders the dog made no effort to indicate its fear to the man why because the man might thrash the little creature it was not concerned with the well-being of the man then what what was it concerned with it was concerned with its own well-being because the dog knows that in such a dreadful climate when survival is at stake how can i find ways to survive it was concerned with its own well-being not with the well-being of the man because the dog was sure that this is a crazy person it was for its own sake that it looked towards fire but the man whistled and spoke to it with the sound of the whip in his voice whip is a kind of a hunter which people use to hit animals and with a harsh tone this man spoke to the dog and obviously the dog is a slave so poor creature has to follow the orders so the dog started walking close to the man's heels and followed him along the trail unfortunately the dog had to leave the fire which was making it very comfortable and had to walk along with this crazy man the man put more tobacco in his mouth and started a new growth of yellow ice on his face and why not it's minus 75 degree so anything would freeze and uh, usually when a man eats tobacco and when the juice comes out inside the mouth they have to spit it out but as you know the spit converts into ice so he had started developing the yellow ice around his face the yellow color is because of the tobacco and the juice that it might have produced inside the man's mouth again his moist breath quickly powdered the hair on his face he had nicely warmed his face and the frost had gone away but now again after he walked a little bit just for a few seconds or minutes the moist breath converted the frost into snow and his beard was full of snow around his mouth again he was not able to open his mouth he looked around him there did not seem to be so many pools of water under the snow on the left side of henderson creek and for half an hour the man saw no signs of any so now he was at henderson creek as with the plan he was moving forward and do you know why there were no pools under the snow now at this moment because it is freezing the temperature is even more decreasing and therefore everything is frozen so he looked around yes there are no pools of water which can be a danger to this man so he thinks that he's good and half an hour uh, he was constantly vigilant he was careful but he did not find any danger signs any pools of water and then it happened at a place where there were no signs the man broke through which means he had assumed that all right there are no pools of water which means i can walk at ease there's no danger unfortunately there was a place where there were no signs usually there are signs at such places which state that be careful with your walking if you walk on this surface you might get through the land into the water and that might kill you there were no signs at this place and the man got into the ice right inside the water but fortunately it was not deep he was wet to the knees before he got out of water to the firm snow so the water which was below the ice layer was just knee deep and not beyond that now this is lucky for this man otherwise he would have frozen to death now he was angry and he cursed his luck aloud he said why me i just wanted to trek and this is happening with me why me he's cursing his fate 
he had hoped to get into the camp with boys at six o'clock and this would delay him an hour why an hour because he would have to make sure that his feet are warm again he would have to take efforts in order for his feet to be nice and warm and moving and not numb so this would delay him so his plan of reaching the camp at six o'clock will be a little delay that's why he was angry now he would have to build a fire again and dry his moccasins and socks and why not both of these things are wet because of the water in which he got drowned this was most important at that low temperature now this is something that he knew if your moccasins or socks get wet make a fireplace and dry them that's what he knew he knew that much so he turned aside to the bank which he climbed on top under several small pine trees he found some firewood which had been carried there by high water of last year so immediately he got out of that hole and to the bank which means an elevated area on the ice i climbed up that bank and uh, there were some small pine trees in that elevated area and there was some firewood which was there because of the high water the water carried some logs and sticks and when the water settled the sticks stayed there now this happened last year the sticks were still there there were some sticks but also larger branches and some dry grasses so here we can already predict that the man has enough material to make up a fire he threw several large branches on top of the snow now he had to make himself warm again especially his feet so he started throwing everything that he saw everything inflammable everything combustible that he saw at that moment and immediately tried to build a pile which he would burn later on this served for a foundation and prevented the young flame from dying in the wet snow his efforts were successful and uh, he made a foundation of branches and grasses and everything that can burn and it will help fire from getting extinguished because you have snowfall you have ice and everything else he made a flame by touching a match to a small piece of tree bark that he took from his pocket so you can already imagine how he must have done he took out a matchbox from his pocket and there was a bark which he had kept and uh, he tried to lit that end of the bark this burned even better than paper surprise placing it on the foundation he fed the young flame with pieces of dry grass and with the smallest dry sticks so after he was sure that now he has some sort of fire which can be stable which can stay there he started adding grass and branches and everything that he saw around to make sure that he has a good amount of fire he worked slowly and carefully realizing his danger why realizing his danger because if the fire extinguishes then his feet will freeze it will go numb and he won't be able to walk so he was very careful attentive gradually as the flame grew stronger he increased the size of the sticks with which he fed it the flame is growing bigger and bigger and stronger he sat in the snow pulling the sticks from the bushes under the trees and feeding them directly to the flame do you think he's making a mistake here i think he is he was sitting in the snow pulling the sticks from the bushes under the tree this is a problem we'll see why this is a problem okay now you already know that the flame is big he knew that he must not fail he was very sure that such a great fire everything's good everything's all right just that i'll be late for an hour to reach the camp otherwise everything's fine i'm having fire i'll dry myself and get going when it is 75 below zero man must not fail in his first attempt to build fire this is what he knew this is especially true if his feet are wet this is the knowledge that he has if your feet are wet then you must not fail to ignite fire how ignorant this man is if this feet if his feet are dry and if he fails he can run, run along the trail for half a mile to keep his blood moving so if he fails in what if 
he fails in doing what if he fails in lighting up the fire there is an alternative he can keep running and that will make his feet warm provided his feet were dry but the blood in wet and freezing feet cannot be kept moving by running when it's 75 degrees below this is the small set of knowledge that he has no matter how fast he runs the wet feet will freeze even harder so if the fire was not successful he had a plan b to run but it is 75 below zero so running will not help this is what he knew the old man on sulfur creek had told him about it and now he was grateful for the advice initially what he did he laughed at him he said i'm a great person i have a good vision and i know that snow can only cause frostbite i will be okay if i wear my gloves but nothing else can happen and he laughed at this, this person but now he was grateful he was thankful that this man had given him this advice but is there anything he could do at this point now that he, was, he has already jumped into ice into the track now he's in the middle of a creek at a freezing temperature there's very little that this man can do all he can be is grateful already all felling had done from his feet already all feeling had gone from his feet which means his arteries and veins were numb there was no blood passing through his feet because of the ice to build the fire he had been forced to remove his mittens and the fingers had quickly become numb so first because he fell inside the hole uh, below the ice his feet were numb and when he tried to lit up the fire what happened his fingers became numb so feet and fingers both are numb at this point his pace of four miles an hour had kept his heart pushing the blood to all parts of his body just because he was walking harder and harder and harder the blood was still flowing but now he was settled so now the problems have increased the instant he stopped the action of heart slowed down he shouldn't have stopped but does he have a choice he doesn't have a choice here he has to stop because otherwise his feet would also go numb just imagine the kind of situation this man is into because of his overconfidence and because he did not believe that old man from sulfur creek usually youngsters and if you're listening to me youngsters of your age of my age we usually try to argue with our elders and say that they are wrong so his heart was no longer pumping blood which would make him warm he now received the full force of the cold yes definitely he would and why not he was sitting down and trying to lit up fire the blood of his body drew back from it the blood was alive like the dog like the dog it wanted to hide and seek cover away from the fearful cold personification found here it says the blood was alive which means the blood was in a good shape and the blood also knew that in such dreadful cold it needs warmth it has to find shelter somewhere away from the cold as long as he walked four miles an hour the blood rose to the surface but now it sank down into the lowest depths of his body his feet and hands were the first to feel its absence and we can exactly imagine how pitiable condition it would be because he is having his feet as well as his fingers numb his wet feet froze first his bare fingers were numb although they had not yet begun to freeze nose and face were already freezing or the skin of all his body became cold as it lost its blood so in english we call this as a catch 22 situation if you look up in the dictionary it is catch 22 it's a condition where you cannot find a solution it's a condition where you have to suffer so now only few of his body parts were not frozen although they were very cold his hands feet face had frozen but he was safe toes and nose and face would 
be only touched by the frost because the fire was beginning to burn with strength he had this fire in place so he thought that he was safe these three things would have warmth from the fire and he would be all right he was feeding it with sticks the size of his finger so he was constantly trying to uh, increase the strength of the flame by putting small small sticks of the size of his finger in another minute he would be able to feed it with larger branches so once the flame has some strength some intensity he would put more and more branches in it in order for the flame to be bigger and very soon he'll be able to warm his toes and face and fingers and he would walk along he would also dry his moccasins and gloves that were wet then he could remove his wet moccasins and socks that's what i said while they dried he could keep his naked feet warm by the fire rubbing them first with snow so he would be he would keep his socks and moccasins maybe on a rock or something and let them dry in the meantime he would keep his feet naked in front of the fire and let them be warm he would rub them first with snow the fire was a success now this is a relief for us as a reader the fire is in a good strength and the man is safe he remembered the advice of the old man on sulfur creek yet again and smiled the man had been very serious when he said that no man should travel alone in that country after 50 below zero so in such a pitiable condition while he is sitting on a log in front of the fire which was increasing in strength he is constantly remembering the man on whom he laughed the man on the sulfur creek the old man on a sulfur creek right he had advice the old people keep advising because they have lived their life well and the old man said do not go to this area it's dangerous you'll freeze to death the man had been facing all of that and he's constantly remembering this man the man had been very serious when he said that no man should travel alone in that country after 50 below zero well here he was had had the accident he was alone and he had saved himself by doing all the tricks so what are his mistakes what are the mistakes of this man number one he's all alone number two he's overconfident number three he lacks vision he lacks all the prediction he lacks education about such temperatures and what happens when a creature a living being goes to such a freezing temperature those old men were rather womanish he thought what was his first thought when the old man advised him he said he's a, a weak man he's womanish he cannot tolerate cold and that's why he's advising me and i'm not going to believe his advice all a man must do was to keep his head and he was all right any man who was a man could travel alone this is overconfidence at its peak any man who's a man which means man with all the masculine characters and all the strength of the world he can definitely beat minus 75 degrees that's what he thought but is it true no it is not it is overconfidence it is pure overconfidence and pride which did not help this man but it was surprising the rapidity with which his face and nose were freezing he had these thoughts he said i'm a man i can face cold but then it was surprising because quickly his face and nose were freezing so it looked as if he's giving up to this severe cold and he had not thought his fingers could lose their feelings in so short time he thought if i beat my fingers or maybe put them in front of the fire they would be warm for a couple of minutes but what's happening fingers are turning numb in seconds without feeling they were because he found it very difficult to make them move together to grasp a stick so let me ask you this question have you been in a situation where your fingers go numb have you traveled to such colder places maybe manali maybe in the northern parts of india where there is extreme cold and you have uh, sensed numbness when your fingers are numb or let me ask you this have you been at a dentist where he injects something uh, maybe in the jaws and after that you cannot feel your jaw the same thing happened with this man 
he is unable to feel his fingers because of the cold and now if you touch something with those fingers he cannot feel anything right so without feeling they were because he found it very difficult to make them move together to grasp a stick now you do not have a control over your fingers they are frozen so how can you grab a stick you cannot they seemed far from his body and from him it was like paralysis where you cannot control your own fingers when he touched a stick he had to look to see whether or not he was holding yes because no control over his veins or fingers no blood flow all frozen all of which mattered little here too he is overconfident it did not matter to him whether his fingers are frozen and whether he is able to grab a stick or not it didn't matter too much for him he has a lot of pride and overconfidence there was a fire promising life with every dancing flame so he relied on the fire now imagine yourself to be under thick ice on a creek with snowfall with frost and fire is the only thing which is your hope fire is your hope at the moment and your feet are frozen your hands are numb and that's what the man is into he started to use untie his moccasins they were coated with ice the thick socks were like iron almost to the knees because they are wet the socks had become like the one like the instrument with which you press your clothes right that hard the hardness had gotten into his moccasins and socks the moccasins string were like ropes of steel yes and why not for a moment he pulled them with unfeeling fingers then realizing the foolishness of it he grasped his knife he was trying to untie his clothes with his fingers but then he realized hey i have a knife with me and uh, i should use it why am i not using my knife but before he could cut the strings it happened it was his own fault or instead his mistake what was his mistake a bigger mistake i should say he should not have built the fire under the pine tree now the pine trees are covered with snow something like this and if you built a fire under such trees do you think you are taking the right step obviously not why because the fire will melt the ice on the branches and it will fall on the fire itself which would which would extinguish the fire he should have built it in an open space what a terrible mistake but it had been easier to pull the sticks from the bushes and drop them directly on the fire why did he lit the fire under the trees because he could just uh, stretch his arm and pull out a branch and put it on the fire again stretch his arm pull out the grass and put it in fire that was easier but he had not realized the gravity of this uh, decision now the tree under which he had done this carried a weight of snow on its branches as we just saw in the image no wind had been blowing for weeks and each branch was heavy with snow there was no wind and every branch had a lot of snow on it each time he pulled a stick he shook the tree slightly you can imagine science working on these things there had been just enough moment to cause the awful thing to happen and what is the awful thing high up in the trees one branch dropped its load of snow let's go back to the image here if you try to pull a branch and obviously these branches are facing the earth a little bit they are inclined so the ice on these branches would fall off if it, even if it shakes a little so that's what happened this felt this fell on branches beneath the process continued spreading through the whole tree the snow fell without warning upon the man and the fire and the fire was dead as i said the snow that was on one of the branch on top of the pine tree let me ask you this have you seen pine trees they are huge 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 and they have great and amazing branches you can see them in northeastern india there are a lot of pine trees on mountains where it had burned was a pile of fresh snow the man was shocked now the man couldn't believe that the fire on which my life depends is 
has extinguished. It was like hearing his own judgment of death. Now he knew that he will die. It's like standing in a court and the judge telling you that you are gonna face death. For a moment he sat and stared at the spot where the fire had been. Then he grew very calm. So out of shock he was staring. What just happened? Then he grew calm. Perhaps the old man on the Sulphur Creek was right. Now he started to realize that the old man had given a true advice. If he had companion on the trail, he would be in no danger now. If he had got someone, maybe that person would quickly remove the snow, try to lit up the matchstick and at least find some solution. But here he was all alone with a creature, with a dog. The companion could have built the fire. Now he must build the fire again and this second time he must not fail. So attempt number two to build fire. Attempt number one was successful but foolish. Attempt number two in progress. Even if he succeeded he would be likely to lose some toes. The feet are frozen and the fire has extinguished. So a couple of minutes passed until this happened and his feet are numb his feet must be badly frozen by now and there would be some time before the second fire was ready so if we recall from the previous paragraph he had to take so many attempts to build the fire such were his thoughts but he did not sit and think them he was busy all the time they were passing through his mind what were passing to his mind all the thoughts all of his thoughts all the scary thoughts but he did not allow the thoughts to pass by his mind he made a new foundation for fire he quickly started taking attempts because he knew that his death is confirmed is assured if he does not take rightful steps this time in the open space so the foolishness that he did in attempt number one is corrected with no tree would be above it so there's an open space where there are no branches above the fire which could uh, drop the load of snow on it next he gathered dry grasses and tiny sticks very quickly he could not bring his fingers together to pull them out of the ground but he was able to gather them by the handful his fingers have gone numb so he cannot feel anything by his fingers but yes you can use your palms and you can use your complete arms to at least you know carry it like a small baby carry the small sticks like a small baby and bring a handful of it in this way he also got many pieces that were undesirable because his fingers were numb he could not choose the exact branches so he got few things which were not really uh, meant to be brought but it was the best he could do he worked carefully even collecting an armful of larger branches to be used later when the fire gathered strength so looks like his attempts attempt number two is successful he's able to ignite fire and now he also has managed to collect armful of larger branches and all the while the dog sat and watched him the dog is watching him and thinking i am with a crazy person god save me and god save this man and the dog is not concerned with the well-being of the man he's least concerned he knows that this man is in a trap there was an anxious look in its eyes because it depended upon him as the fire provider and the fire was slow in coming the dog had an anxiety because the dog's life is also dependent on the fire or on the fire provider which means the man a crazy man when all was ready the man reached in his pocket for second piece of tree bark in his pocket we saw earlier that there was a tree bark there was a matchbox and this is the second piece that he carried and these are all uh, combustible uh, things and tree barks they burn very quickly you must have seen forest fires when one tree falls and if another tree is near its vicinity then what happens there is a fire there are huge forest fires so these tree barks they are really nice and combustible substances he knew the bark was there although he could not feel it so he put his uh, hand inside the pocket but sad news fingers are numb and he could not feel the 
bar. He tried again and again but he could not grasp it and all the time in his mind he knew that each instant his feet were freezing. Now these are his attempts to ignite fire again but in the meantime his feet were frozen because a couple of minutes had passed by and in that area where he was the Henderson Creek liquid would solidify into ice very quickly so his feet were completely numb this thought alarmed him but he fought against it and kept calm so he had this one quality which kept him going keeping calm although he was foolish and uh, proud and overconfident but keeping calm and figuring out the methods i think that really helped him he pulled on his mittens with his teeth and began swinging his arms because anyhow he has to pull this tree bark and only by the tree bark once the tree bark is ignited he can take the tree bark to the branches with the, which he has gathered by his numb hands and then he could ignite fire and what was the plan b to make his arms warm again move it rigorously right so he started swinging them then he beat his hands with all the strength against his sides he did this while he was sitting down then he stood up to do it all the while the dog sat in the snow its tail curled warmly over its feet and its sharp wolf ears bent forward as it looked at the man so this man is sitting down moving his hands then he stood up moving in his hands and this dog is again watching anxiously and he's thinking how crazy is this man what is he doing what is he up to and the dog is furry its tail is furry and its curl uh, in such a position that it would warm its feet and uh, its ears bent forward and the dog was trying to figure out what is this man up to what is he doing and the man as he waved his arms and hands looked with longing at the creature that was warm and secure in the covering provided by nature now there are two creatures in the picture one a human being second a dog the man is trying all his efforts to make sure that his body parts are warm and on the other side this dog is nice and steady and sitting um, in at some place near his uh, area and all the security it has provided by the nature the dog is warm because nature has provided everything it needs to survive in such a temperature after a time he began to notice some feeling in his beaten fingers the feeling grew stronger until it became very painful but the man welcomed the pain now if you hit your fingers to your body or maybe keep swinging them constantly you will feel the pain but the man thought it's okay it's all right at least i feel the pain he pulled the mitten from his right hand and grasped the tree bark from his pocket the bare fingers were quickly numb again yes so as soon as he was able to feel the bark and take it out from his pocket in few seconds the fingers went numb again next he bought out his pack of matches but do you think he will be able to light up the matches i don't think so but the awful cold had already driven the life out of his fingers so taking the bar out was successful but now it's the time to lit up the match in his effort to separate one match from the other like we do usually at temples or to light up any other stuff that we have we pull out one matchstick first from the group this man did the same thing the whole pack fell in the snow god save this man the whole pack fell in snow because he is unable to feel this match box he tried to pick it out of the snow but failed the dead fingers could neither touch nor hold what a awful condition this man is in now he was very careful he said let me focus and try to pick the matches up he drove the thought of his freezing feet and nose and face from his mind he said let me not think about my freezing body parts right now and focus on the matches that have fallen i need to pick the matches very carefully and if i do that i'll be able to lit up the fire which will warm my body parts he devoted his whole soul to picking up the matches he followed the movement of his fingers with his eyes using his 
sense of sight instead of that of touch. When he saw his fingers on each side of the back, he closed them. His eyes are the only source by which he could successfully pick up the matches. When he saw his fingers on each side of the back, he closed them. Now his sight is helping him to maneuver his hands. That is, he willed to close them because the fingers did not obey. What is the meaning of fingers did not obey? He is unable to feel his fingers. So his mind wants to move the fingers, but they are not acting according to his decision, according to his mind. He put the mitten on the right hand and beat it fiercely against his knee. Then with both mitten hands, he lifted up the back of matches along with much snow to the front of his jacket. Now try to imagine yourself picking up uh, match sticks which are all scattered in the snow your hands are numb how would you do it it's impossible right so similarly this man had gained nothing after a lot of efforts after some struggling he managed to get the pack between his mittened hands in this manner he carried it to his mouth the ice broke as he opened his mouth with fierce effort the ice where was the ice ice around his mouth and his mouth is open now so what is he going to do next he used his upper teeth to rub across the back in order to separate a single match now first his eyes then his teeth are the only source on which he can depend he succeeded in getting one so successfully by his teeth he pulled out one matchstick which he dropped on his jacket his condition was no better he could not pick up the match he tried to pick one but that was dropped on his jacket then he thought how he might do it he said what's the last option i have i use my teeth i use my eyes my hands are gone my feet are gone he picked up the match in his teeth and drew it across his legs 20 times he did before he succeeded in lightening it so this is a relief for us again his efforts his futile efforts finally resulted into something he was successful in lightening it as it flamed he held it with his teeth to the tree bar but burning smell went up his nose causing him to cough so saddening you can imagine a person trying to lit up a matchstick through his teeth and obviously when the matchstick burns initially it throws up a lot of smoke which goes into the air and in fact even if you do it with your hands the smoke gets inside your nose and you get away from it like now this man was holding the match stick in his teeth so you can imagine the level of coughing he suffered and because of the coughing the match fell into the snow and the flame died again he is remembering the old man on the sulfur creek he thought in the moment of controlled despair that he followed after 50 below zero a man should travel with a companion now he has learned his lesson he beat his hands but failed to produce any feeling in them suddenly he bared both hands removing the mittens with his teeth he caught the whole pack of matches between his hands his arm muscles were not frozen and he was able to press the hands tightly again against the matches so he took out the mittens from his hands with his teeth and then the pack which was there in front of him he got the whole pack between his hands fortunately the muscles in his arms were not frozen he was able to press the hands tightly so at least the muscles were not numb and he was able to press the hands against the matches so that he could lit up the matchstick he drew the whole pack along his legs and all the flames burned together 70 matches at once there was no wind to blow them out he kept his head to one side to escape the burning smell and held the flaming pack to the tree bark i like the way the writer has uh, described the situation okay such a great hold on english and such a great hold on describing the situation of this pitiable man so in order to avoid or in order to stay away from the flames which happened previously with one matchstick he kept his head on one side and held the pack to the tree bark 
and he so held it he noted some feeling in his hand his flesh was burning he could smell it what a tragedy so when your hands are numb and if somebody burns it will you feel the burning no you wouldn't unless you smell your own flesh burning so now his hands had started burning already the feeling developed into pain he continued to endure he said let me bear the pain let me uh, allow my flesh to burn but i have to endure it otherwise i will freeze to death here he held the flame of the matches to the bark that would not light readily because his own burning hand were taking most of the flame now most of the flame was inside his flesh now the flame was burning his own meat so that part of the flame was not actually igniting the tree bark which he had pulled out from his pocket the flame was burning the flesh instead of the tree bark well friends the story is getting interesting here but i believe it's one hour that we studied part two i'm going to continue in part three the remaining paragraphs and i believe in part three we would have completed this story it is thrilling it is amazing an excellent writer by jack london and no doubt why he is so famous and so rich because of his uh, write-ups i thank you for watching and i hope you have an amazing and safe day ahead